everybody. Welcome back uh, to Star Wars Connection. We're Willow and Irina, and today we're going to be talking about Kelly Marie Tran's role in the sequel trilogy, notably the likelihood that she'll be playing a romantic uh, companion to John Boyega's Finn in The Last Jedi and in the episode 9 as well. So, um, one of our oldest podcasts, we actually talk, touched on uh, Kelly Marie Tran. This was when she, we first kind of heard about her that she was going to be playing a love interest for Finn in The Last Jedi. And um, a lot of evidence has come out since then, since, like, over the past, I guess, like 11, like, 11 months to a year, that this is indeed going to be the case. It really, like, seems like it is. And, um, yeah, just, like, all the uh, different things have been piling up, and especially recently now with, like, Star Wars Celebration happening and uh, Kelly being introduced. But, um, anyway, in terms of the actual, like, things that have happened, uh, Kelly was actually cast around, like, fall uh 2015 like late fall and um, we know this because of an instagram post where uh she was kind of like celebrating with the just posting and celebrating with some friends and saying that like she got this role that was going to be a big step forward for uh an asian like an asian actress an asian woman in hollywood finally and um <laughs> yeah <laughs> No, it's just right. that it, it's it's an important topic for me because my two younger sisters they're they're adopted they're Asian so and um, so Asian representation is something that's really important for me so um, especially um, I'm into musical theater and it's a really relevant topic at the moment so um, yeah <laughs> I just had to burgeon about it. <laughs> Plus, with like with movies and with white women being cast as like in Asian roles that would have, like, a, what was that, Ghost in the Shell? I think yeah. it was. Apparently it I was didn't, a I didn't actually see it. Me neither, I just but heard. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, right. um, right. yeah, and um, there's Ghost in the Shell, there's um, Iron Fist, where, you know, you had the protagonist that's played by Finn Jones, but apparently in the comics he's actually an Asian character, and the uh, one mm. playing <clears throat> the villain in Iron Fist is an Asian actor who actually auditioned for the role of the protagonist, and oh, what wow. happens, yeah, the protagonist that played by Finn Jones, Finn Jones doesn't have any training in martial arts, but a guy playing the villain actually does, so, you know, I'm gonna be happy <laughs> about roles in Star Wars, seriously, especially that, considering that George Lucas has taken a lot of inspiration from Akira Kurosawa's movies, so we finally get mm -hmm. a major Asian actress in Star Wars, I mean, it was about time. So, it, it really is, and I, I think she's going to be great, too, just seeing, like, her energy and her charisma. She seems like she's going to be a really, yeah. really great addition to the to the team. Well, yeah. And, um, yeah, like, for me, like, especially when we saw that Instagram post, the like, that it was going to be The Last Jedi, that was, like, the only logical conclusion, I guess. And mm -hmm. um, she was actually chosen over a lot of other better-known actresses. Which yeah. was, again, kind of interesting. I, I think um, Ryan Johnson just really liked her. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was a, it was a nice, it's nice to have another, like, not well-known actress, like, in the team as well. Someone kind of like, uh, similar, in a similar situation to Daisy Ridley, who was, like, really unknown until The Force Awakens. But perhaps even more so. Yeah, well, I think... Uh, All right. Yeah. Because when we look at the other actresses that were auditioning for the role, I mean, there was Anna Kendrick and... Gina Rodriguez, who were both, you know, who are both wonderful actresses, but, you know, I think it's really great that they're bringing them another wall, like, what I could call an ensemble dark, ho dark horse in a way, so, yeah, I'm mm -hmm. really excited, and I hope that, you know, Star Wars give, gives her a lot of acting opportunities, and that we'll get to see her in other films, so, yeah. No, I agree, she's, I, I, I really hope so as well. Mm -hmm. All right, so, like, um, the time when that, that was like it really became obvious, I guess, for me that she was playing the, like kind of a love interest for Finn was in about May of last year when all those set photos were uh, leaking from the Dubrovnik set, and um, there was that really iconic picture of, of uh, Finn and Kelly's. Everybody ended up realizing that it was Kelly's stunt doubles on top of this like weird looking <laughs> alien horse thing. llama, and they were like, <laughs> "It's a llama." <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Um, like this, it's going to be those the another one of those hideous things from Tatooine. I think it was Tatooine, was it? Yeah, it was. Yeah, yeah, back in the day. Yeah, I hope not though. Please. Yeah, <laughs> as long as we don't get Ewoks again, we'll we'll be fine. <laughs> no, but it's going to be cool because it's a uh, it's um, a model too, so it's not just yeah. going to be full CGI. It's going to be a nice like mix of the two, and I I always find that looks really good. So, mm -hmm. but um, yeah, Finn and um, 
this uh, the character we we didn't have a name for her at the time, but Finn and Kelly's character were they were kind of in like a close em- not embrace, but they're close together on the on the horse. Mm-hmm. And um, that led to a lot of theorizing, of course, at the time. But it, it was very like it just it just seemed likely at that point that there was these two characters were going to be going on some kind of adventure. They were going to be um, spending a lot of time together, and because of the way they were to get like they were so close, it just seemed like it was very possible that they were actually going to end up being romantic interests to each other. And um, of course, that's progressed since then. Uh, Kelly was ended up being seen at Star Wars Celebration 2016 wearing a T-shirt with Finn on it. And if you fast forward a whole year later, she, uh, she was obviously introduced finally, and uh, two Padme and Anakin's love theme across the stars. And that's a really cute moment. You can go watch it in the in the in the actual uh, like filmed version of the uh, panel. It's it's really great. Yeah. Well, and um, th- sorry, sorry, you were going to say something. Oh, no, it's okay. okay. You can go okay. on. <laughs> Especially that, you know, she just came in and she was so enthusiastic about finally introducing her character after all that time, so... Oh, yeah. true, true. Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah, because, but, like, I remember I remember even even last year, um, Ryan Johnson, I think it was Ryan Johnson, was talking about how he wanted to, to introduce her, but that didn't end up happening mm-hmm. <laughs> until now, so... Yeah, especially that she told a story about, you know, she would go around at last year's celebration and asking people, like, hey, can I take a picture with you? And people had no idea who she was. <laughs> who she was. Yeah. <laughs> and she showed up and was like, oh, I was actually here last year, and I was wearing a t-shirt with Finn on it, in case nobody noticed. <laughs> we actually had noticed, so it was, yeah, but it was great. Yeah, one thing that's really sweet she's is that... Really, she's really cute. Yeah, well, she's super excited about Star Wars. She seems to be a Finn fan, like her character is apparently going to be and what's really sweet is that John seems to be John Boyega seems to be really excited about her as well. Like yeah, last mm-hmm. year at, at the Cannes, Yeah, like in Cannes Festival he talked about her and um I don't know, I mean just at the the last Jet Jedi panel at Star Wars celebration, like the way they would kind of fiddle with each other and you know, kind of be <laughs> giddy when like one of them spoke right. and everything. They were, so, they were great. They were sweet. They were really, really cute. Yeah. It really was. It it seems like um, for the marketing, they're definitely going for um, Finn and, uh, well, Finn, well, John Boyega and Kelly this time, and then I guess letting Daisy and Mark kind of do their thing as well, like mm-hmm. splitting them up again into those two groups. Mm-hmm. But, um, yeah, I guess we're going to have to wait and see for that because we, we only have a few, a few, a, a bit of, if you can even call it marketing at this point. Mm-hmm. All right, so um, next we wanted to talk about uh, Rose, who is actually Kelly Marie Turn's character. Um, what we know about her, um, what we think might happen, and like, yeah, talk about our own speculations for her, where she might go from here, and like how she, what kind of, what kind of person she is, and what her situation is, and how that might evolve throughout the course of the film and throughout the course of uh, potentially episode nine. Okay, so what we know about Rose until now is that she's part of the maintenance crew in Resistance, Uh, so basically Rose the Raider technician. Um, (laughs) (laughs) Oh my god, I didn't even think about that until now. Yeah, I mean, (laughs) amazing. Yeah, so um, they were doing marketing about Rose, like, back in, was it in January that it aired, or February? Like, yeah, back in February, like, 2016. Uh, Something like that, yeah. Yeah, like, courtesy of Adam Driver. (laughs) So, um... (laughs) Who had no idea, of course. Obviously, so um, nice and nice irony. <laughs> yeah, so she is like Finn, you know, kind of an every woman kind of character who gets thrown into an adventure she hasn't asked for, and apparently she is a bit of a fan fan girl because ever since he blew up Starkiller Base, well, <laughs> Finn is apparently popular with the ladies. So it's not outright stated, but it's pretty obvious that Finn and Rose are going to be romantically involved. So, um, John Boyega even said, uh, even said, like, um, I think it was at the, I think it was on Good Morning America or something, some kind of interview. He said that um, John Boyega, like, or that Finn was a, who's a big deal now, and he's like waving to all the resistance women, and <laughs> and then Rose is kind of, <laughs> he said that, and Rose is kind of this like, she she, she seems like she's gonna she, she's gonna be a, one of those like oh big fan kind of like she she's into him maybe and uh, he said that she was very interested in Finn and uh, we're going to see what that goes cuz it's just it sounds like it's going to be a good good potential for comedy good potential for a lot of like heart and um it just it, it seems for me like it's a nice setup it feels like kind of a Cinderella like um a kind of nobody every woman girl and then this guy who used to be that who used to be in that situation mm-hmm. and he ends up now 
kind of flipping and, and then she's going to think like maybe, oh, uh, I don't know if I can, if I'm actually good enough for this guy or if I'm like, if I'm, if I'm worth enough and mm-hmm. uh, she's going to obviously have to discover that she is and that Finn wasn't really always who he is now and that he, he came from like being a, you know, a cleaner on Starkiller Base or Stormtrooper, mm-hmm. like. Yeah, so it kind of makes me wonder, like, will Rose even know that, you know, he, he was actually next Stormtrooper? Because I don't know, was it was it outright stated in The Force Awakens, like, you know, oh, when... Oh, wow. What, what, I didn't think about that. Yeah, because in the debriefing, like, um, you know, Leia goes and sees Finn, and I, I'm pretty sure she knows he's a runaway Stormtrooper, but, you know, she's like, oh, you saved Poe's life and everything, and I don't... I should rewatch the movie, but I don't remember her saying in public that, you know, like... He's an ex-stormtrooper or something. She doesn't. Okay. She doesn't say it. They don't mention it. The only time it's ever really mentioned, like, post, you know, us knowing it, is Poe knows, obviously, and Rey, mm-hmm. and that's it. And nobody else, and then I guess somewhat Han, but it was more like a, you know, yeah. kind of guessing deal. Not really so much that he actually knew. He just knew that there was something off with Finn, not so much that there was, specifically, he was an ex-stormtrooper runaway. Like, oh my god. But, uh, yeah, I did, I really... I never thought about that. I never thought about Rose potentially not knowing that where he came from. And it's going to be interesting to see if that actually plays a role in some way. Because um, they have talked about that Finn is going to be a kind of, again, in that situation where he's not sure if he wants to be the big mm-hmm. deal or if he wants to, like, run away from the First Order and actually, like, save himself and that kind of self-preservation. And I, I wonder if that's going to have something to do with there with Finn and Rose's kind of dynamic in The Last Jedi. Okay, so, well, it kind of reminds me, you know... Um, we had some Reddit leaks, as you probably know, they're very, very, very reliable, 24-7. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> right? yeah, I mean, they were saying, you know, for instance, the very amazing theory that Rey is Anakin's reincarnation, or, you know, that of course. Rose of course. might <laughs> betray Finn or the Resistance, so, um, yeah, so... There were so many of them. <laughs> yeah, so, for her, like you know, eventually, like, betraying the Resistance or something, like, in my opinion, like, with what we got at Celebration, it really, really doesn't line up with what we've got of her character and everything, and especially that, you know, it was mentioned on forum, not by me, but, but yeah, on the forum, not by me, but someone else, that, you know, Kelly Mary Chan, she's at the beginning of her film career, and, you know, she's playing a character that might end up, you know, being hated for being a traitor, and, you know, for an actress that's just starting in the industry, it's really not a good move, so, yeah. Well, not so. only that, but uh, Kelly Marie Tran, mostly, from what I've heard, she's mostly known for her comedy work, and for her, like, YouTube co- co- comedy sketches, Yeah. so there's no way they aren't going to be using that, there's no, like, like, the sense that I really got from Star Wars Celebration, and from <laughs> everything leading up to this, is that... Finn and Rose are going to have a very, maybe, not necessarily a light relationship, but it's going. there's something about it that's going to be more on the comedic side, more on the, like, heartwarming, nice, like, you know, fuzzy <laughs> side for, like, <laughs> I don't know how else to describe no, it. No, no. But, yeah, that's that's the feeling I get from okay. them, that it's going to be something very heartwarming and something that is not, not something where she's going to betray him or <laughs> yeah, whatever. <laughs> Especially that, you know, you just look at them side by side and they just look cute together. You kind of want... They, they know, do. I mean, they really do. Yeah, you just want, like, to take a blanket and wrap them up in it and just leave them there. She, she's she's so cute and, she, and he's, like, he's, he's like, handsome and they, they just, they look great. She's short and they look great together. They really do. Like, just, yeah. like physically, they really, they really complement each other. Yeah, they do. So, um, yeah, just to get back to what her possible plot might be, um, we know that she gets thrown in adventure, as we mentioned before, she hasn't asked for with Finn, and, um, you know, she starts out as an every woman, just like Finn was a bit of an every man in The Force Awakens, so I think that she might be called to become a heroine in her own wo- right, albeit in, albeit, albeit, mate, is that how you pronounce it? Albeit? Albeit? Okay. My French is still um, Habit? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so okay, okay. Never mind. so um, great. she becomes a heroine in her own right, but you know more in in unexpected ways. So, um, from what we see of spoilers that are a bit more legit than those um, Reddit leaks. <laughs> <laughs> oh god. Okay, I'm gonna yes. throw a lot of shade on them. I the warned you in advance. Like, the salt. <laughs> yeah. So um, it's okay. I, I feel it. Too. So um. <laughs> 
So um, they seem to be leading towards Phasma being um, Finn's main antagonist in The Last Jedi. So John Boyega, as we mentioned before, he has also talked about Finn having to make choices, either side with the Resistance and become a hero, or, you know, keep running from the First Order. So I think that the climax for Finn in the movie might be that he's confronted to that choice by Phasma, and right in front of Rose's very eyes, because drama... So, um, we know sex... <laughs> so... <laughs> I agree. <laughs> so, sorry. Okay, so, um, we know that, thanks to Kelly, that Rose is a big fan of Finn, so his choice might go both ways, but considering that I think Finn might get the classical hero's journey, so he might do the heroic choice and end up, you know, surrendering to the First Order to save the Resistance, or Rose, or both, so I just think that, you know, maybe Phasma could maybe use Rose as a bargaining chip, like, to man- manipulate Finn or something, so... Yeah, I, mean, I totally agree. I yes. Do. I really agree with that. It makes a lot of sense. So, Especially because, like, Ray wasn't that character. She wasn't that character that, that yeah. um, anybody could, could was going to end up using to, uh, to manipulate Finn, but I think Rose could be that character. And she could end up saving herself as well, but... Uh, <laughs> yeah, so, because, especially, we'll like, you know, if we look at Force Awakens, I mean, Ray constantly saves herself, and, you know, in the end, like, you know, when there's the, the confrontation, like, Kylo Ren versus Finn and Ray, I mean, what Finn does, you know, when Ray's knocked out, well, it's very heroic, because he's going against, you know, a wannabe Sith Lord, well... Kylo's not a Sith, but you know, yeah. he's kind of being... Quick. But then he ends up getting knocked out himself and misses the whole rest of the fight. Yeah, because... And, uh, yeah, I think that Rose is going to give him, like, Rose, and then, I guess, having being his own person, being his own hero in his own story is really going to give him the potential to shine as a character. And I think that Rose is actually the, the one of, like, the perfect idea of a character to shine alongside him and shine in her own right, of course, as well. It makes a lot of sense. So, I thought that, you know, you know Finn is has become a prisoner of the First Order, and at that moment, well, maybe Phasma could just, you know, let Rose go, because she could do something like, you're a lowly maintenance worker, you're of no use to us. (laughs) So, you know, because, and that would be that moment where, you know, Rose realized that, no, I'm actually worth something, so she could actually go and um, choose... Well, she could choose at that moment to step in and go and save Finn. So that would be kind of her heroic moment. So, mm-hmm. yeah. <laughs> and it really, really shows that progression from being, like, kind of a nobody. That That's, again, that's the impression I get from Rose, that she's just part of this big machine of the resistance. And she's just, like, one of the one of the gears turning every day. And she's just this, like, no, nothing, I guess. And she's just, yeah, one of the people who goes around and fixes things. And she isn't, like, a hero. She isn't the big pilot. She isn't, like... She isn't a general. She's just a girl. And it, it's going to be really great to see how that plays with Finn, who's really just, just a guy. <laughs> and it should be a lot of fun. Well, it's interesting because we kind of have that theme with, you know, the main characters in Star Wars. Like, you know, you look at Rey, you look at Finn, you look at Rose. They start out, start out as nobodies, but mm-hmm. they're called to become heroes. And then you have Kylo, who's the legacy child, and, you know, he's supposed, like, you know, if it wasn't for him falling to Darth Vader, like, he would be supposed to be the hero of the trilogy because he's the Skywalker kid. But, you know... Absolutely, yeah. You know, he gets... He chooses a path that's different from what his family, apart from Anakin, but, you know, Anakin will be Anakin. Um, <laughs> yeah. Skywalkers will be Skywalkers. <laughs> yeah, so um, he chooses a different path from the one his parents chose. So, you know, he... He ha- so legacy, his legacy in this case is really more of a curse for him more than anything else. And, you know, he, I think he believes that, you know, he has a cause he has to fight for. But deep down, you know, he kind of wants to go in a hole and hide in it because <laughs> he, he, he's not happy where he is. So, yeah. Yeah. Sure. So, um, yeah, that, that, that's it for speculation for The Last Jedi. <laughs> Well, I guess we talked about a lot of things. I mean, yeah, we talked about uh, what we think is going to happen with Rose, uh, why we think she's going to be the love interest, and uh, yeah, I guess that was pretty much it for our uh, conversation for today. But um, yeah, so uh, yeah, that was our discussion of Rose and uh, what we think is going to happen next. So this was Willow and Irina, and uh, yeah, have a good day, everybody. (laughs) 